Hello, and welcome to another episode of Craig Biddle Live. Today, I want to talk about uh, two subjects uh, in a way that uh, is closely related um, to, to each other. I want to talk about both meaning and morality in uh, a godless universe. And this, I think, is an important subject because uh, many people believe that uh, there's no such thing as there's, or there's no possibility of meaning or morality in a godless universe. Uh, this is held, obviously, by a lot of religionists, um, but it's also held by uh, existentialists uh, such as uh, Jordan Peterson. It's held by postmodernists such as uh, Richard Rorty. And it's held by uh, some of the prominent uh, and very outspoken religionists of our times, uh, even some of the better ones, such as Ben Shapiro uh, and Dennis Prager. And so I want to talk about both uh, aspects of this, the, uh, the idea of meaning and the idea of morality, uh, and how we can have them uh, even if there is no God. And, and there is no God, so it's an important uh, question. Um, uh, so we'll start with uh, uh, meaning, and we'll talk about morality afterward. The uh, answers to both of these uh, issues, or both of the, the, the questions surrounding this, you know, how can you have uh, meaning without God, and how can you have morality without God, um, the answers are very related. It's, it's essentially the same fallacies that people uh, have in their minds, or, or, or that they're operating with, that leads to confusion on these. Um, just in slightly different uh, applications. So I think it'll be helpful to look at them together and then sort of combine uh, the two in a hopefully uh, better understanding of how um, we atheists and objectivists can answer people when they uh, make such claims as, as you can't have meaning or morality without God. And hopefully it will also help uh, <clears throat> bring around some people who are confused by this, uh, by this idea. Um, so we'll start with meaning. The question being, how can, how can you have meaning in life? How can your life be meaningful? How can you know uh, what matters, uh, what you should go after, uh, what is significant in life, um, unless there is an all-powerful being in the sky issuing some kind of dictates about what your meaning in life has to be, the idea being, in effect, that a meaningful life is a life in which you obey God's commands or you serve uh, him uh, by being obedient. And if you think about this, if you, if you examine this idea, it, it becomes immediately absurd, especially if we isolate out of uh, the picture everything except a, a person and reality. So assume that you're on a desert island and you've, you, maybe you're shipwrecked and you find yourself on a desert island and you're sitting on a rock. And so the desert island basically represents the universe, or the rock that you're sitting on represents the universe. And there you are, and you ask yourself, or, or you look at the rock, and you say, oh my goodness, this rock has no purpose. It, it, it doesn't have any uh, intentional goals. It, it's not even alive. It has no goals at all. Uh, and here I am alone in this place with a dead rock that has n no uh, aims in life, and it has no, it's, it's, it's not more important than me, so there's just me and, and, a, and a rock that is clearly uh, less important than me. How could I possibly know what is significant or what I should do today, right? You would never find yourself asking that kind of a question just because the rock doesn't have purpose or isn't more important than you. So, expand that to the universe. So we look out at the universe and we say, oh my goodness, there's just a bunch of planets spinning and asteroids, uh, uh, you know, running around. And uh, on Earth, I mean, maybe there's some other life forms, but none of them have the kind of intentional goals that human beings have because they don't have free will. So, you know, we see plants and animals pursuing uh, goals of sorts, but they're not purposeful and they're certainly not more important than human beings. So how could we possibly know what we should do? What's, what's important in life? What would make life meaningful, right? It doesn't make any sense. What makes life meaningful are the choices that human beings make about the kinds of lives that they want to live. Uh, if we choose long-term goals uh, involving things like, uh, you know, career and or education pr prior to that and career and romance and recreational activities, if we think about the kind of life that we want to live, 
and then pursue a life like that, uh, then the goals that we're pursuing in pursuit of that big life that we want are precisely what give meaning to life. The meaning of life is the goals that we choose and the means and ends that we go after in order to achieve those goals. And there's no reason in the world to think that just because there's not some greater power in the sky that's, you know, beaming down uh, some alleged meaning on our lives or issuing commandments that we can follow and therefore uh, have, have meaning by being obedient to him. There's no reason in the world to think that we can't have meaning in life without uh, some, some greater power. Meaning is just the, uh, the, the significance of the actions that we take toward goals that uh, give, uh, uh, give rise to a wonderful life. So if we want to live a meaningful life, we have to think about what would constitute a fabulous life for us. Uh, what kind of career do we want to do? What kind of relationships do we want to be in? What kind of society do we need to uh, establish and maintain in order to be able to pursue our values? So a free society uh, is necessary for a meaningful life. And you can just, uh, that's quite obvious if you consider uh, the poor folks living in North Korea versus the people living in America, I mean, whose life is, is more meaningful. So you, we need freedom. And then we need to be able to, and then we need to choose and pursue rational life serving goals within that context. And that, that's where meaning comes from. So for the religionists who claim that you can't have meaning without uh, a, a God, or you can't have uh, purpose in life without God, um, it, it just doesn't make any sense. And I think the desert island uh, example helps to shed light on that. So let's turn now to the the question of how can you have morality without God, and, and it's very related. Uh, the idea here is that if, if there's no uh, omnipotent, omniscient uh, man in the sky issuing commandments to us, we simply cannot know what's right and wrong, what's good and bad. As Dennis Prager puts it, if, if there's no God, then uh, murder isn't wrong. It's just an opinion that it's wrong. Well, if if you are anchored, if, if, if you are just dead set on deriving morality from an external uh, source, and if you, you won't even uh, countenance the possibility that uh, morality is a matter of the requirements of human life, then there's no way that, that, that any reasoning is, is going to help you. But if you will, for a moment, say, okay, look, why do we need morality at all? Why do we need values? because either we need them or we don't. And if we don't need them, then we don't need them and we can set, them, set the issue aside and just stop worrying about it. But if we do need morality, if we need values, if we need to know what is good and bad, right and wrong, what actions we should and shouldn't take, then the reason that we need that information and the reason that we need those kinds of principles is going to shed a huge amount of light on which of those principles are right. And this is why uh, the philosopher Ayn Rand uh, approached ethics with the question, what are values? Why do we need them? Uh, what is morality? Why do we need it? Why do we need a code of values, a morality, a, a, a set of principles to guide our, our uh, thoughts and actions in life? And if you start there, if you start with that question, rather than looking back in history or looking at cultural norms today and saying, well, which of the existing moralities should we embrace? Um, then you're not looking to people or or scripture or uh, or tradition. You're looking to the facts of reality, which is a good place to look if you want to derive morality from facts. So Ayn Rand said, in effect, let's look at the question of why we need values and ask what are values and why do they matter in life? And then we can derive moral principles from that uh, the, the answers to those kinds of questions. And if you do that and you start looking at reality, you realize that values are the things that a living being acts to gain or keep. And this is true on the plant level. It's true on the animal level. So if you see plants growing, they reach their roots into the ground and they turn their leaves toward the sky to get the nutrients that they need in order to photosynthesize and live. And animals do the same thing. They run after the critters that they need to catch and eat in order to live, or they chew on the vegetables that they need, and they see seek shade uh, or protection from uh, uh, critters and creatures that want to eat them and so on. And you get to human beings, and we do the same thing. We act in order to gain the things that we need in order to sustain and further our lives. And this is a fact-based, empirical, logical approach 
to the question of what is morality and, and, and what are the principles of morality. And if you go there, if you're willing to think in this direction rather than to think in the, the direction of tradition and religion, then you certainly can derive morality uh, from the facts of reality in a godless universe. Um, we don't need God to understand w what the requirements of human life are. Um, we need values in order to live. Okay, which values do we need? Well, we need food, clothing, shelter, etc. Fine. How do we get those? Uh, do, do they just rain down on us? No. We have to use our minds. We have to think. We have to use reason. That's the, the human means of survival, is, is the use of our rational faculty. So there's a, a principle right there arising from observation and logic about what we are and what we need to do in order to live. We have to think. We have to figure out which foods are edible. We have to figure out how to produce the values on which our lives depend, how to plant and harvest food, how to catch and eat or catch and train animals to work and, and serve our lives, how to build huts, how to build skyscrapers, how to build iPhones and the whole nine yards. All of this is a matter of scientific fact based on observation and logic about the nature of human beings and the factual requirements of our life. We don't need God. You don't need the concept of an omniscient being uh, raining down uh, you know, commandments on you to understand any of this. What you do need is you need to be willing to set aside the traditional view of morality in order to think in this direction. And I think the problem with many religious people is they've had religion so beaten into their minds since they were children, going, you know, being forced to go to Sunday school or whatever, that they're not willing to even think in this direction. Um, but that's not a, that's, you know, on, on pretty much uh, any moral code, uh, thinking for yourself or any rational moral code, thinking for yourself is a virtue. You, you need to use your mind. You need to understand uh, whether uh, ideas are true, and if so, why, and, and what they mean in your life, especially a big idea like morality and where does it come from. So for religionists who are stuck on this idea that you cannot get meaning or morality unless there's a God, ask yourselves these simple questions to start a thought process to help you work your, your way through this, because you need to understand this stuff in your own mind. You can't just take somebody's word for it. But if you ask the right kinds of questions, I think you will see uh, that there are facts that give rise to uh, meaning in life for human beings. Um, and those facts are, in order for our uh, uh, human beings to live wonderful lives and to flourish and to enjoy their, their one life here on Earth, they have to act in certain ways. You have to choose goals and we have to pursue them and it's the pursuit of those goals, whether career, romance, recreation, music, whatever, uh, that makes life meaningful. And th this is pretty empirical if you, if you take uh, this, this observation-based approach. And the same is true with morality. If we ask, okay, we're human beings, we survive by means of reason, uh, what do we need to do in order to live? Uh, that's the only reason we need morality. If we don't want to live, we, we don't need moral principles. We don't need principles at all. Uh, but if we do want to live, then we do need to know which actions are good and bad, which actions are right and wrong, given that overarching goal, the goal of, of living and pursuing happiness. So um, both of these ideas, meaning and morality, are uh, extremely important in human life. And both of them are ultimately anchored in the factual requirements of human life based on the kind of animal that we are. The fact that we're a, a, a rational animal that, that, who can make choices and has to make choices. We have volition. Um, and so we don't have automatic knowledge about what is going to support our lives. We have to discover that knowledge and then we have to choose to act accordingly. We have to choose to act in ways that make our lives wonderful and that uh, enable us to establish and maintain free societies so that we can live and flourish. Um, so. Uh, consider these uh, together and mull over this idea and read Ayn Rand's views on, on these ideas. Read her approach to uh, uh, deriving morality from reality and uh, read uh, objectivist literature on uh, meaning and purpose. You'll find some of that in my book, uh, The Morality of Self-Interest and the Facts That Support It. Uh, you'll find it in Leonard Peikoff's book, Objectivism, the Philosophy of Ayn Rand. And you'll find it throughout Ayn Rand's uh, nonfiction and especially her fiction, where she 
shows people who embrace uh, her philosophy living very purposeful lives and very moral lives. Uh, they're not faking reality. They're not treating people horribly. They're not robbing, stealing, you know, and plundering. They're producing, they're thinking, and they're living wonderful lives uh, with other people in, in a peaceful way. Um, this is what human life's all about, and we don't need uh, a tyrannical guy in the sky to understand any of this. I hope that's a helpful approach uh, for uh, people who are new to these ideas and for people who are familiar with these ideas. I hope looking at those two together, meaning and morality in light of, uh, of uh, a godless universe is helpful. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Uh, join me not next week, but the following week for another episode of Craig Biddle Live. Uh, I've got a prior engagement next Wednesday, so I won't be uh, 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 broadcasting then, but in the following week I will. If you've got a question you'd like me to address in a future episode, please drop it into the comments below or email me at cbittle at theobjectivestandard.com. Till next time, love your life.